I found out why she comes home late from work and it's horrible. Part 1. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. After I had a dreadful incident of cheating with my GF in college, Lisa, I took place on a lengthy tedious goal to get even with her. This was adhered to by years of just being bitter and also jaded towards ladies. After college, I went down to Central America where I pretty much spent years just doing and also marketing medicines. Never ever taking into consideration getting into a connection or permitting myself to have sexual relations with another woman. I fully confess that I was a dreadful degenerate during this moment. Well, after a couple of years of this I found myself just much more depressed than ever. The medications weren't working anymore. I wearied of having these face value superficial and also short-lived relationships with women. I was determined to drop whatever I was doing in Central America as well as come back to the United States. I called an old good friend and also made arrangements to move into his place temporarily till I come back on my own feet. When I returned to the USA I decided to stop my gnarly drug habit I had established before my college breakup with Lisa. It had not been very easy but I was completely committed to giving happiness an additional shot. I was likewise determined to provide dating another possibility. I had started to really feel worthless that I was giving up on finding somebody special just because some girl in university broke my heart by cheating on me. A couple months after moving right into my friend's place, I had actually been on a couple of excellent dates with women in the area and began opening back up to the concept of permitting myself to grow close with a lady once again. Eventually I met this lady on a dating application, we will call her Kate. Kate was 25 and also I was 23, that I just definitely fell head over heels for. She had that burgundy red hair that wasn't orange but almost more of a fluorescent but natural red. She had a three-year-old son who honestly I loved and looked kinda just like me. Kate had just gotten out of a terribly abusive marriage and was in a very similar position as me. She also just went through a period of grief and a bad drug habit. She had just cleaned herself up and was ready to try dating again. This worked well for both of us because we both completely understood each other's emotional state and were able to allow one another to proceed slowly and not expect too much out of each other. We both had fears of commitment and trust issues and were still a little emotionally fragile due to our past relationships and drug habits. Besides this we had so many things in common. Kate even said she felt like she was dating the male version of herself and she liked it because we allowed each other to be completely authentic. As the months rolled on we grew closer and closer. Me and her son got along and he even called me dad. He was too young to remember his biological father and I was the only other father role he's ever had in his life. The day I taught him how to pee standing up on a tree sealed the deal for me and he was my son from that point on. I got a job at a finance firm and Kate worked at a nightclub. Things were going well and we moved into an apartment together, bought a car together and were in the process of trying to buy a house. We were going to get married and have a kid of our own. We only smoked weed occasionally and felt like we had fully recovered from our past drug addictions and emotional wreckage. We both crawled out of the depths of real darkness and found some peace and happiness together. Or so I thought. Me and Kate never had any jealousy or suspicions with each other. We fully trusted each other. We never went through each other's phones and we knew each other's passwords and login info to everything so we never had any issues around trust with one another. Until this happened. Typically, I would get up early in the morning before I got ready for work to walk Kate into the apartment from the parking lot because she wouldn't get home until after 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning from work and it was a bit of a sketchy walk. The club typically was only open until 2 a.m. most days but recently started staying open until 4 most nights of the week. Or so Kate told me. One morning Kate said she was leaving work a little later because she had to drop a friend off at her house. She told me this only like 5 minutes before she would ordinarily arrive home. It usually took her about 35 minutes to get home from work so I found it a bit odd that she told me so at the last second and I knew where her friend lived so it may have only taken an extra 5 minutes to drop her off on the way to our place. She ended up getting home about an hour later than usual and something seemed a bit off. She looked high. Not on weed, but it struck me as if she was on coke, or molly. I briefly confronted her about this but she brushed it off quickly and said she was late because her friend's car broke down and they tried to get it fixed but couldn't. That's why it took so long to get home. This was the first time in almost a year that anything like this happened so I quickly pushed down my suspicions and chalked it up as me being a bit paranoid because of my past experience with infidelity and dishonesty. I told myself Kate would never do anything sketchy. 
She had been through the same thing I went through and she knew in full detail my story about my last relationship. She would never do anything like that to me. Especially since it happened to her too. I wasn't even that suspicious of her cheating or anything. I was more suspicious that she was doing hard drugs again. Slowly but surely incidents like this started happening more frequently. First like once a month and eventually led all the way up to happening almost every week. There were a few nights where I was almost positive she was high on drugs and we fought about it. She finally admitted one day that I thought she was high, that she did half a line of coke once because she was tired and needed a pick-me-up to get through work but that was all she did. At this point, she was coming home at 5, 6 or even 7 a.m. some mornings regularly. Her club closed at 2 or at 4 a.m. depending on what day of the week it was. She always had excuses like the car wouldn't start, she would go to her friend's house after work to smoke weed or she went to a waffle house with some of her co-workers after their shifts. But then, one morning, her text messages seemed severely suspicious. She wouldn't respond promptly, and it really seemed like she was forcing herself to sound genuine when texting me. She was doing the I'm going to be home a little late dance with me again. But this time it really dragged on. She told me she was on her way at 6 a.m., two hours after the club closed. So at 6.30 I went outside to the parking lot to walk her in when she arrived. It was snowing heavily outside. There was a blizzard going through the area. About an hour goes by and I hear nothing from her. I text and call her over and over. She doesn't answer the phone but I get a message from her saying she's almost home. Another hour goes by before she finally pulls up into the parking lot. The time was 9.30 a.m. I had to call out from work because I couldn't leave her son home alone, I usually left for work at 7.30. I'm completely covered head to toe in snow. I walk up to the car and I open her door. Kate looked at me like she had seen a ghost. And she begins rambling nervously and almost incoherently. She said she got pulled over but was let go without a ticket, the car ran out of gas so she had to stop to fill up. Her friend was having a mental breakdown so she stayed with her for a while to help her after work. She even started blaming me for things like saying she wouldn't have gotten pulled over if I got the registration done sooner. Yada yada yada. Thing is she could have told me this by texting me or calling me at any point during all of this. It was all very suspicious. The whole time she wouldn't shut up, giving me very inconsistent stories while we were on our walk into the apartment. I can't help but notice how dilated her pupils are and how she is visibly grinding her teeth. Obviously, I was very angry at this point but I was so exhausted and cold from standing outside for hours and worrying about her. I temporarily let it go and tried to distract myself with some video games. I was convinced she was doing cocaine at work or after work. What else was she up to? Who was she doing cocaine with? Just her co-workers and friends? Is she doing other drugs? Was she cheating? Question mark. I was only mildly worried that she was cheating. I was more concerned about her drug use. We both had our runs in the past with them. Hence why we only smoked weed nowadays and occasionally had a drink. We weren't sober or anything like people in a 12-step program but we tried to keep it very mellow. Her lying about the drugs was even more concerning to me than the actual drug use, because it was triggering my trauma from my ex Lisa who lied to me and cheated on me in college. I literally was at the point where I didn't even care if she did the drugs. I just wanted her to be honest with me. I couldn't stand the thought of being in another relationship where my GF was lying to me about anything. My mind began to spiral. I felt completely betrayed. There are more to come. Find out the update of this story, check our channel or the description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.